Hello, my name is uh, Mr. Wu Tak Seng. I am the Director of Pharmacy at the National University Hospital and I am also the President of the Singapore Pharmacy Council. I wanted to be a pharmacist so that I could pursue my interests uh, in maths and in the sciences, especially chemistry and physics. I wanted to apply what I learned in the sciences to help people. And so I decided that uh, pharmacy would be a good career. Ask me after all these years, and I've been practicing for nearly 37 years now, it is being able to use my pharmacy knowledge and skills to assist patients, doctors and nurses in medication management so that patients can derive uh, positive outcomes and meet all the aims, medical aims of preventing disease, cure disease, prolong life and palliate. And to me, there's nothing more satisfying than to see patients well, get out of hospital and be with their loved ones. And to me, that is the greatest satisfaction I have. And even now, I always ask myself, if there's one thing that keeps me going, what would it be? And it would be the patient. And if there's one thing that I would not give up doing, it is to continue to contribute to patient care. It is to continue to help patients where I can. It is to, to relieve pain, to be able to help those who need my help. And that's in the area of medication management. To maximize the use of medications in relation to its benefits and to reduce the side effects associated with it. Time management. Doing too many things and fulfilling too many obligations. There's also the part about keeping up with advances in medicine, pharmacy and information technology. It requires me to continue on to read even after hours to be able to keep up to date because there are many, many advancements and there are many, many changes and there are so many drugs. But really, at the end of the day, to be able to do all that is also, for me, the reason why I'm a pharmacist. Because when I took on the pharmacy career, it is to know that we will need to continue to improve, we will need to continue to change and we will need to continue to learn new knowledge and new skills, especially in the areas of medicines and technology. The other challenge, of course, is understanding patients' needs and fulfilling them. Not all the patients are the same. Some more demanding, others not so. But regardless, our job is not to judge them. Our job is to help them. And so we, we must be attentive in listening to what they have to tell us. We also must then make our own assessments as to what the patient requires. And I take it all as part and parcel in the day's work as a pharmacist. The other part is actually working with other healthcare members, the doctors and the nurses, and collaborating with them and making sure that you know we all know what we're doing and that we're all on the same team. The team to fight disease, the team to help patients, focusing on the patient and the disease as our targets and bringing health, bringing cures, bringing effective treatments to patients who require. First, it's actually a case where we had a patient with a acute promyelocytic leukemia who experienced a subdural hematoma and was comatose. And we had to give a drug called all trans retinoic acid. And it's in a capsule and it's an oil formulation. And we, we couldn't orally feed the comatose patient. So the only thing we could give was actually to feed the patient through a nasogastric tube. But we couldn't squeeze oil down the NG tube, neither could we squeeze the capsule down the nasogastric tube. So I discussed with the physician 
regarding a possibility of administering the drug sublingually, that means under the tongue. So we took the capsules, four capsules per dose, punctured the capsules and then squeezed it under the tongue. And we got consent from the patient to actually draw blood at certain time intervals to monitor if the drug is being absorbed. And lo and behold, the medicine was absorbed. The blood concentration showed that the drug was absorbed. And thank God, after 24 hours, the patient woke up. That I will never forget. The second experience, actually, my volunteering at the Tsunami uh, Red Cross mission uh, in January 2005. On 26 December 2004, tsunami struck. Sri Lanka was one of the countries where there were victims. And the Red Cross mission that was mounted by the Singapore Red Cross uh, saw me together with three doctors, one nurse, managing you know the treatments as well as drugs uh, in a town called Trincomalee, Sri Lanka. We, we arrived in Colombo and we had to travel seven to eight hours to the northeast of Sri Lanka. And we were there for about two weeks. And in that time, we treat about 300 patients a day. Doctors examine and I dispense medications in very harsh conditions. And we did that for about two weeks. I never forget the gratitude of the patients, the hopelessness of the victims. And yet we could bring comfort, we could bring care. We treated you know anything from diarrhea to rashes to people with infection, did what we could and I think the locals were appreciative and it reaffirmed my commitment and my belief that as a pharmacist I could contribute to healthcare in this manner. They have told me that I have to stand on my feet for most part of the day when I work. I thought I could sit down but uh, that's not the case. Only when I rise up in the management ranks, then I get more time to sit. But it also means that I have to walk to, to look at what my people are doing. I wish they told me that this is not a 9 to 5 job, that it is a commitment to help patients. It's also a commitment to be the best that you can be. It's not just doing work at 9 o'clock in the morning, go home at 5 o'clock and then end of the story, watch TV and go to sleep. It's not. It is figuring out how you can solve the patient's problem with regard to medication management. What, what was it that was wrong with the medication treatment? How can we do it and how can we do it better? And that I have to sort out patient's problems and sort out the dilemmas confronting patients. I thought I could just dispense medications, you know, tell patients what I need to tell them end of story, but that's far from the truth. So really, if they've told me all this, then we'll not have to discover, but the discovery for me was a journey also in a way. Maybe if they told me earlier, I, I would have said, no, I, I don't think I want to be a pharmacist. But I never regret. And if I was to start all over again, I would still be a pharmacist. That you must like the sciences. You certainly must be good in maths, chemistry and physics and biology. That you want to be in healthcare to help patients manage their medications that you like to work with patients, that you must be prepared to work hard, that you subscribe to the medical aims of prevent disease, cure disease, prolong life, and palliate. I hope at the end of the day, if you want to be a pharmacist, I hope you will be the best and be the best that you can be.